welcome. You're watching News X. I'm Megha Sharma. Uh, this is Waku. 75 years of independence for the country and the bilateral ties between India and the world. Specific focus today on the country of Italy and India. It is not just 75 years of independence for India, but it is also 75 years of bilateral ties between India and Italy. Joining me on the broadcast is His Excellency, who is the ambassador of Italy, Vincenzo De Luca. It's fantastic to have you on the show. Great pleasure to join your show and to celebrate with this interview the 75th anniversary of the independence of India and of the bilateral relation between Italy and India. Thank you so much. Thank you. Your Excellency, while our ties diplomatically have lasted 75 years, they have been from centuries before in terms of trade, in terms of commerce. In fact, there have been Ramayana caricatures and images and sculptures that have been found on a number of murals and walls in certain places in Italy. How do you look back and see at these ancient ties between India and Italy, as well as the diplomacy that has been built over, over the several years? You are perfectly right. The history of the relationship between Italy and India are really long-standing. Uh, since the Roman period, we had a trade exchange, cultural exchange. And over the history, this relation has become more and more important. And particularly after the independence of India, Italy has been an important partner of India in the economic development, as an industrial partner, as a political partner of India, and also in cultural relations. We have developed so close activities, events, and relations between our two countries. Absolutely. Uh, Roman Empire when it comes to heritage, when it comes to culture, the political capital of the world, the cultural capital of the world, the most famous architects of the world, politicians of the world, thought leaders, uh, philosophers. How has Italy been able to give to the world as well as to India all the knowledge that it has gained and been able to cultivate o o over since, since centuries ago, from, right from the first century up until now? It was uh, during the Roman period, but also in the Renaissance period, uh, Italy expressed a global culture, value, principles, uh, art. So uh, our contribution to the evolution of the culture all over the world, because, you know, Italy is a country with a very diversified culture, with a lot of influences, but also with the creativity that has been developed all over the our history. And in this evolution, we always have met India in a way or in another, and especially, I repeat, after independence, where now we have this long-standing cultural tradition together with the contemporary creativity. You know, for example, the, all the creative industry, design, fashion, art, music, food, are fields where India and Italy join their efforts and have a lot of exchange, even now. Now even more than in the past. Mm -hmm. When you talk about tourism particularly, and that is the primary driver for a lot of Indian nationals who travel and visit Italy every year, perhaps even twice a year and multiple times in the year. How is the government of Italy doing more to attract more and more of these Indian nationals, particularly post-COVID? I can tell you that before COVID, 2019, we received in Italy 130,000 Indians and tourists. And we have also a community of 180,000, the highest community in the European Union, mainly from Punjab, but also from other states. And now we have re resumed our visa activity very, very strongly. Now we have uh, increased a, no, a lot the number of visas compared to last year. And we are trying to do our best to accelerate the procedure. But especially we want to attract more and more tourists in Italy, also in diversified itineraries. It's not only Rome, Florence, Milan, Venice. There are so many other beautiful cities. You know, Italy is uh, the country with the highest number of UNESCO heritage sites. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, of course, an uh, attractive uh, center for shopping in uh, fashion, design, very good restaurant, very good food. So that's why India loves to go to Italy. Also, I think because we have so close human relations between Italians and Indians, here in India as well as in Italy. The same 
number of tourists come from Italy to India. I mm -hmm. hope that also in the coming month we have an increased flow of tourism in the two uh, uh, directions. And I also I'm so happy that in the coming months we will have direct flights from Italy to India, from India to Italy. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. That's, that's going to be good news for the tourists exactly. from both sides. Exactly. I'm going to move on from tourism to the renewable energy, which has been the focal point for European Union, whether it is Germany, whether it is Denmark, whether it is Norway, or for that matter now, Italy going forth. You have been participant in the International Solar Alliance that took exactly. place just a few days ago. And uh, what are the views in building up Indian capacities and manufacturing hubs over here to allow for renewables, and particularly solar, to reach out to Asian nations? You rightly mentioned the last uh, General Assembly of the International Solar Alliance, where I delivered the speech, underlined the importance of the fact that Italy became full member of the International Solar Alliance last January, one of the European countries who joined the uh, International Solar Alliance, and also, even more important, we signed the Italian government and the Indian government, the two prime ministers, Modi and Draghi, last October in Rome on the occasion of G20, an important joint statement on a strategic partnership on energy transition. Energy transition means renewable, means smart grid, means hydrogen, means infrastructure for gas, means e-mobility. On all these fields, we can share technology, expertise, and moreover, we want to promote more investment from Italy to India and from Italy, India to Italy. Traditionally, there have been a lot of immigration that has happened from India's side, particularly when it comes to the skill sector, which is the IT sector. And a lot of farmers, you spoke about the Sikhs from the Punjab community that have traveled in hordes from the 1990s, and that was the expansion. How is the Italian government looking after the immigrants for their welfare? I think we have in Italy a very integrated Indian community. They uh, contribute a lot to the technology and the value chain of the food processing in, in, in Italy. But I think we have potential also to attract more Indians in the engineering sector, in mechanic, machinery, both investment and uh, human resources. And we, are, we, we also want to contribute here in India in the making Indian process with our expertise. So I think uh, there is a joint interest, a common interest in having more exchange. We attract more and more students from India to Italy, especially in Politecnico Milano, Politecnico Torino, Bologna, Rome. And uh, we are really encouraging this uh, uh, tendency mm -hmm. and we want to do more in the coming years. It's interesting you talk about education and how there are a number of students that are attracted to Italian universities. There are not a lot of incentives that have been given by EU nations when it comes to free education and it comes to education that has now been transformed from your native tongue to English. Has Italian government also taken forth certain steps to attract students or from overseas, particularly Indian nationals? In the last 10 years in the Italian university, we have increased dramatically the number of English language courses in all our faculties, in all our universities. That's why an increasing number of students from India want to go to Italy, mm -hmm. because we have very good university in engineering, in design, in architecture, in medicine, in many sectors. And we, have also, we are also a country that uh, welcome these students in Italy. We try to facilitate their life in Italy. And also the cost of uh, Italian university is very much affordable, more affordable than other in, in other European uh, countries. There are a lot of free education that is also advocated by the governments. Is Italy also in line with that concept to be implemented? There is a program of scholarship at the central government, but especially at the regional government. Uh, um, there are facilities for and incentive for students coming to Italy. We have launched uh, some promotional event here in India with Unitalia, that is an agency, public private sector organized in this way, that uh, explain and present the program of our university and also the incentive, the condition where uh, th that the Indian students will find when we come to Italy. G20 presidency is going to be taken forward by India in the coming months. What are the expectations of the G20 nations from India? As you know, Italy was the chair of G20 in 21, and we are now in the Troika for the G20 in Indonesia, and we will contribute certainly with the G20 in India. Our focus was on global taxation, to have the condition for a more inclusive growth. 
we have uh, a focus also on the fight against pandemic and the contribution to climate change uh, uh, programs all over the world. So I think some of these uh, priorities are still there. We will contribute to the G20 success here in India and uh, we will work very hard in the coming weeks because the presidents of G20 will start the uh, first week of December here Absolutely. in Absolutely. First week of December, that's going to be quite the celebration exactly. over here in India and several parts of the country, including in Kashmir as well, exactly. because some of the sessions have been lined up. Uh, India at the brink of becoming the third largest economy in the world in terms of GDP. It has already taken over United Kingdom, which is now sixth, India on the fifth. Uh, how does trade and bilateral ties between Italy and India look, uh, are envisaged. You spoke about, we've spoken about particularly the IT sector, but what are the other, and renewables as well, you talk about solar, but what are the other avenues that both countries can align and cooperate? First of all, I have to tell you that Italy has become the third trade partner of India in the European Union. And in the last three years, despite COVID, we have increased dramatically the statistic, the number of the bilateral trade. Last year, we reached the top record of 10.4 billion euro of bilateral trade. And this year, August, we have already reached 9 billion. That means we will be, even this year, 22, more than 21. And this uh, incre dramatic increase in the bilateral trade is largely based on uh, an increase of import from India to Italy of uh, basic products for our manufacturing, uh, namely iron, um, aluminum, and steel. Mm -hmm. And also an important increase of export from Italy to India of advanced manufacturing, machinery, and composites. So there is a synergy, a sort of interdependence between the two manufacturing. Don't forget that Italy is the second manufacturing country in Europe after Germany. Yeah. And the, uh, India was to become a global platform of manufacture, also in the reorganization of, of the global value chain. So I think Italy and India will, will become a very important partner in the framework of the relationship between Europe and India. I would like to have really progress and uh, uh, finalization of the negotiations that are going on on free trade agreement, geographical integration, indication and investment protection agreement. We will give our contribution and we hope that this negotiation will, have, uh, uh, will be finalized uh, maybe hopefully before the end of next year. There are a lot, there's a lot of talk when it comes to the free trade agreement. Unfortunately, the one that was to be signed f between India and United Kingdom by the end of the Diwali period has been stumbled because of all the cacophony and chaos that has happened. The, the Prime Minister, Liz Truss, has already resigned in 45 days. Uh, EU has been in talks. There were talks that had been stalled in the past, but there has been a renewed energy that has been exactly. included. How does Italy see itself in building a free trade uh, agreement with India individually? I think there is now a new momentum of, for this negotiation. Uh, last uh, May, la May last year uh, in Oporto, in the summit between European Union and India, Prime Minister Modi and the leaders of the European Union launched a new round of negotiation on the three chapters, free trade, uh, investment protection agreement and geographical indication. This is the evidence that uh, there is a, a strong political commitment to promote this negotiation because Europe considers India a pillar in the global scene, in the global order, and especially in the Indo-Pacific uh, area. So, and the same, I think India is more and more interested in having more relation with Europe, uh, especially in uh, I, I, I really advanced technology sectors, and also, I would say, in the defense sector. So I think there are all the potential to uh, really develop this negotiation and uh, finalize the uh, negotiation. It's interesting that you mentioned about the defense sector and how both the countries can buy allies. There is a defense expo, the largest one at that, that was launched by the Prime Minister just two, day, two days ago in Gujarat. How can Italy contribute to this expansion of Atmanirbhar defense, which is making India defense? We want to contribute uh, to the development of the Indian capacity in the defense sector according to the line established by the Indian government, making India and self-reliant India, self-reliant India, 
And in this sense, uh, uh, our big companies like uh, Leonardo Finmeccanica, Fincantieri, and, but also medium uh, and small enterprises uh, want to uh, invest more here in India in the framework established by the government, also with partnership with Indian uh, uh, companies. I'm going to touch upon a very sensitive subject that has shaken the entire world, particularly the European Union, the energy crisis that has emanated due to the Ukraine-Russia war. How is EU and Italy looking to control the crisis, mitigate it, and what role should India be playing? First of all, we have to say that the responsibility of the war is the invasion of uh, the, Russian the Russian army in Ukraine. That's the first point. And this war has created a global impact global impact in terms of energy price, in terms of food supply, in terms of inflation. And also India is experiencing this negative effect of the war. So, of course, as the European Union, we try to stop the war and to uh, protect the rights of Ukraine and try to find a solution. Uh, I hope that also India can contribute to this effort and it's the, it's the, the interest of all over the world to find a solution of this conflict. Otherwise, the consequences of the war will remain for years in the global, creating uh, unpredictability and risk for the global economy, for inflation, for the global growth, and also for the supply of energy and food. So this is our imperative to really stop the war and find solution. There are a lot of commentary that has been coming forth from European Union nations, including from France, including from the Prime Minister of Hungary, including from, in fact, one of the entrepreneurs, top entrepreneurs uh, and the former Prime Minister of, of Italy himself, Berlusconi, uh, about wanting to end the war and the damages that have been incurred by the European Union nations in terms of the energy crisis be uh, stabilized. By, because it's not United States of America that is actually facing the consequences. It is the European Union nations, particularly when the German uh, chancellor ends up uh, deciding to go and visit China, or for that matter, when the French ambassador goes and says that I'm going to resign from my post. I don't even know what I'm fighting for. I don't, I don't even know what France is fighting for. There are protests, there are blackouts. Uh, what is uh, the Italian government's stance in this entire matter? The Italian government has been totally aligned to the European response to the war and also to the reaction uh, yesterday and today, in Brussels, there's been a, a, a Council of Europe, European Union, and the decision has been to uh, find a, a joint uh, action to reduce the price of gas, try to reduce the price of gas and help companies that suffer this situation. And also to promote more diversification of supply for European countries. Italy has been the country more, more active than others to find new sources in the Mediterranean countries, where we have a pipeline with Algeria, Libya, and we have LNG from Egypt, from Qatar, and from other African countries. We would like to increase the supply of gas from Azerbaijan. We have reduced already the dependence uh, on uh, Russian gas. And you have to consider that Italy is the most e extended uh, uh, grid of gas all over the Europe and maybe in the world. We are a sort of hub of gas. And we are in the position we can contribute more than other countries to the diversification of gas supplies towards the European market. The important point is that now Europe acts as a, a, a sort of... Uh, a single body in the gas market. We want to uh, emphasize the importance to be an actor in the gas market, diversifying supply, and also try to negotiate the price with the producer uh, countries. Fair enough, uh, and that's going to be the, to the advantage of the European Union and cut down this economic crisis that has hurt a lot of economies, including United Kingdom, including Germany, including France as well. Uh, I'm going to move on from the Ukraine crisis that is engulfing the European Union particularly. It's, it is alarming, but, but also when it comes to uh, the shift that has happened in global supply chains with COVID, and there has been an aversion to China and Chinese-made products and the manufacturing hubs that at one point of time traditionally were providing for all requirements for the West, including America, including EU, is there a likelihood of these alternative supply chains then pouring into India 
and what are the prospects that you see? Certainly, Italy and the European Union are working for a diversification of the supply chain and also for the supply of energy and other basic material. Uh, because uh, we are trying to, uh, in close collaboration with the United States, to have more strategic autonomy in terms of our industry and our technology. Certainly, India is one of the pillars in this diversification of market and of supply, because I mentioned before that we are increasing also the supply of some basic product for our manufacturing industry from India. So I think uh, this is why the relationship between Italy, Europe and India become more and more strategic for the interests of our countries, of Europe, and, and for the interests of India. India also uh, is a, in some of the same targets as the European Union, try to have a strategic autonomy. Strategic autonomy means in terms of energy, in, in terms of defense industry, and in this sense we can work together between Europe, I Italy, Europe and India. There have been uh, recent developments and heartening to see that the cinema of Italy is being appreciated by the, by the Indian citizens. Uh, there have been these festivals that have been organized parallelly, whether it is Delhi or Bengaluru or other parts of the country. Uh, how does the people to people connect and the cinema allow to bring the two nations together? This is a very good uh... Uh, event. I am so happy of the su great success of Italian screens in India. For the first time ever, we had this, in the same week the presentation of the new Italian movies in India in Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Bangalore. In Mumbai, we organized a great event with the Bollywood industry because we are not only talking about the promotion of Italian movie in India, but we are talking about co-production between Bollywood and the in Italian industry, uh, movie industry, and also production in Italy of Bollywood uh, film and movies. And also this is a way to attract more tourists in Italy and more tourists in India, because uh, cinema is one of the channels to know better each other and also to exchange our culture, our tradition, our creativity. So I'm so happy of the success of this initiative. This is not a standalone event, but it's part of a process. Uh, Italy was a, a country partner of Fiki Frame in 2020. India has been the focus country for Venice Movie Festival 21 and 22. And we'll go on in this partnership. And Very successful. That's brilliant. Also, you talk about, you know, uh, Bollywood creating films. And there are fantastic sets that are created in the picturesque Italy, be it Venice or Florence and several of these. Amalfi, you know, beautiful, gorgeous. Exactly. Uh, how are you pushing this forward? Yes, this is one of the ways in contributing to the narrative that is being built, promotion that is being done. What more is in store? Yes, not only there are wonderful sites, but we have also one of the most historical production centers in Rome, Cinecittà, which hosted in the 60s the big production from Hollywood. But even now, we attract more and more international production because Cinecittà has been relaunched, renewed, a lot of investment from the government. There are investments also that are facilitated in the movie production industry by the incentive provided by the Italian government for the production in Italy. So there is this uh, channel that it will be, I think, more and more important in coming years. And I also have to tell you that Italy not only host, uh, will host more uh, movie production, but also a lot of Indian wedding in our Well, on series. that note, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining me on this telecast. Here's to the burgeoning ties between both the countries. Whether it is cinema, whether it is culture, people to people connect, bilateral ties, trade, solar and renewables is something that I really look forward to because this is exploding, particularly with EU and India coming together and uh, looking forward to not just more 75 years between the bilateral ties between both countries, but, 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 but hundreds and hundreds of those uh, uh, ties to ensure that the GDP progress that India is witnessing is also benefited to you and your country. Yes, is right. I think we have looked at the future and in the future we'll announce a more and more comprehensive partnership, friendship, relationship between Italy and India. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.